The thing that I like about this design is that it only takes one coil to do the job and if it has to be multiply pulsed then that's what's going to be the end run deal for it because this is basically a transformer and once the coil reaches saturation there's no more inductance and there's no more transfer of power to the little bullet over here which is a sleeve of copper aluminum or brass that I haven't made yet so with the winding here it's about a 0.15 ohm DCR possibility of up to 3000 amps of current can flow through there at the point of saturation and at that point I'd have to have a scope on this to analyze it to find out how I'm going to make this exactly work but that's what I'm going to try to do so bear with me and this is part one of the video today I'm going to show you how to wind an induction rail coil gun this typical design is 11 layers of 14 gauge wire it's wound very tight and very neat and I'm going to show you how to wind it without the end caps this happens to be about a 3 8 inch diameter steel rod it's about 9 inches long I'd like it to be longer but my bandsaw has a 9 inch throat so I'm limited so with much to do let's get to winding this coil and I'll show you how it's done I got my foot on the spool. I keep tension. It's gonna be our last our last one we could put on. Bring this around here. Start from the opposite end where the wire finishes. Oh. 
That's it, man. That's the secret. The little hold tapes on the end. I want to crazy glue the end. I've already done this, this side. Always do that side first. Don't go crazy with it, but make sure it wicks in there. Use a box or something, put a hole in it, secure it till it's dry, give it an hour or two, a couple hours. <clears throat> 